I'm going to begin in Proverbs 11 and then I'd like to read a little bit in Proverbs chapter 16 and and then Philippians chapter 2 and Eleven and two. And it said, When pride cometh, then cometh shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. In Proverbs 16 and about verse 18. Just around the corner, he says, Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. <sighs> Paul, in, in the Kenosis passage of Philippians chapter 2, and about verse 11, but beginning at verse 7, uh, he made himself of no reputation, talking about Jesus, took upon him the form of a servant and made and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father I want you just to touch somebody and just help them humble yourself well, this is the first, then, in a series of messages that we're going to call the little foxes that spoil the vine. And I think it's necessary to visit the place of weakness, particularly during the time of consecration, so that we might meditate on those things that get in the way of our spiritual progress. I'm going to call them the little foxes in other circles, particularly in the Catholic circle. They're called the seven cardinal sins of the Catholic Church. And in other circles, uh, and I think one of the most wonderful places to, to depict these sins is in the Parsons' tale. Uh, that is now the Canterbury Tales, and of course by Geoffrey Chaucer, and in the middle is the Parson's Tale. And he very colorfully depicts and points out the negative uh, that uh, rests in all of us in a manner that we all could enjoy and at the same time repent. Uh, the 14th century concept the causes that keep us from going to the next level uh, depicted by Geoffrey Chaucer in the Parsons tale. Uh, wonderful way to see how ugly we can be. Uh, when they talk about sin, one, one quote from there is that a man should remember his sins yet he should not remember them in delight. Unquote. He should remember his sins but not in delight, as we have oftentimes had much pleasure in, uh, yes, reenacting and recounting the times that we did such nefarious things and we talked about them so prolifically. But he says, remember your sins. Another quote is, he that sinneth is slave to sin. Sin puts a man into a deep thraldom. And so since pride is the first sin, then we'll talk a little bit about pride. Now, when it comes to other sins, pride makes anger meaner. Pride makes the eye of envy greener and the cruelty of malice heavier. Pride makes the lust of greed 
deeper and the pain of hatred sharper. Pride makes the shame of rebuke even harsher. Ah, what is pride? Pride may well be defined as the idolatry of self. Yes, that is the deceitfulness of sin is evident because what God does is he blesses so wonderfully that if you fail to understand who the blessor is and you begin to focus on the, the blessing instead of the blessor, then it slips you into an attitude of pride. I want you to notice that uh, Lucifer was so beautifully erected and structured by God that he took one look at himself and decided that he needs to praise himself and not his God. Uh, God's the only one I know who blesses with gifts that are so marvelous and with talent and ability that's so wonderful that if you're not careful, what he has blessed you with and blessed you to become can cause you to slip from focusing on him and begin to focus on yourself. Uh, uh, Webster defines it as an inordinate self concept, esteem, you know, it's an inordinate, which means that there is a level that all of us should have in terms of our self-esteem. That's why the Lord says that a man should not think more highly of himself than he ought. And what God declares there, as he speaks there in Webster's giving you some insight, and that is that a man should know the level he is on. A woman should know where they are and their thoughts about themselves must be equal to where they are. If I think too little of myself, then that's a problem. But if I t think too much of myself, then that's a problem. The, 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 the Greek word in Romans in that particular text says that soberly, an individual who thinks too much of themselves is crazy. And an individual who thinks too little of themselves is crazy. You see, to, to think properly and to be sane, you have to think of yourself within the proper parameter of who you are and who God has made you. And once you think of yourself on that level, then you have the proper self esteem uh, yes and the proper self-esteem causes you to be communal instead of individual you see you have to know who you are and know who God has made you and it takes away the edge of being defensive or, or, or being overly braggadocious or boastful trying to find a place of significance for yourself. Uh, when God has made you and placed you where you are and set you up the way he wants to set you up, you don't have to help him by being braggadocious or ugly because where God has set you, he will move you and the glory belongs not to you but to the God who is working it out ah uh, yes it is uh, the Greeks the Greeks call it vain glory it's a sort of vaunting boastfulness and uh, but the Hebrew uh, is a little little very interesting uh, uh, one word they had is is gi and, and and this Hebrew word means to rise up it means to rise up. I mean, uh, God has set you in a place and God has put you within the parameters that he has chosen for your life. And then all of a sudden, you just begin to rise up. Uh, it is Satan who was placed as an understudy of God. And his beauty was so profound that he looked at himself and he began to rise up. He began to become more than he was and come out of his place into a place that only belonged to God. 
I'm going to rise. I'm going to sit on this throne. I am going to become all that he is. And I am going to show myself to be strong. Uh, John Milton, uh, Paradise Lost, uh, has Satan sitting by the side of the, of, of the, the, the sea of, of, of hell. And, and, and Satan is sitting there and he's talking to his boys. And his word is, is this the soil? Is this the climb that I must exchange for that ethereal throne? He, he, he's talking about the lurid attitude of the place and he, he's trying to find some peace within himself because he rose up and, and he accuses God of not being as beautiful as he but just stronger that's it you know that uh, I'm here because he, he is more mighty than I and, and and he says he says I will exchange it I will stay here this is fine this is good I will be here because I'd rather rule in hell than serve in heaven uh, that's John Milton paradise lost it, it, you see it's the spirit of, 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 of Satan that's pride he, when, when, when you look at what ought to give God glory and you take that on yourself the Hebrews say you rise up because now sin enters into the picture one quote is sin enters into the picture when there is a shift of ultimate confidence from God as object and source to oneself as the object and source you are not the source of your pulchritude you are not the source of your intellectual capacity you are not the source of your of the family you were raised in and the events that took place to form and make you who you are you are not the source of all of that money that you have in the bank and the car that you drive and the house you live in you are not the source ah there are people out here who are smarter than you who don't have what you have there are people out here more beautiful than you more handsome than you more intellectually capable than you but the door didn't open for them the way was not made for them you are not the source God is the source and every time you look at yourself instead of rising up to be important rise up to praise the name of your God I feel it here Amen. I, I got to preach to your hair. Touch somebody and say, now remember to be humble. You get ready to be blessed. Uh -huh. Remember to stay humble. Don't, don't let the blessing blow your mind. Uh -huh. Remember to stay humble. Yeah, after you get married, you need to be humble. Uh -huh. Yes, yeah, after you get married, you need to be humble. Don't, don't, don't get so big until uh, you have to be divorced. Uh, please. Uh, uh, then there's Zed now. There, then, and Zed is simply arrogant. And uh, uh, what, what it means here physically this word from this etymological placing is to boil which means that there's an expansion there's going to be an expansion because if there's boiling you already have the water that at, at a certain level and then when it boils it begins to bubble up it begins to to, to expand I, I bought some sneakers the other day because I couldn't swim and I have to walk or run jog I haven't done it in years but I guess I'll start and uh, and I said to him I said man these things are a little big he says no that's the right size he said because what's going to happen now is as you begin to run your feet are going to swell they're going to get bigger and uh, you fill the space uh, you know when, when, when you're too big for a certain space it's uncomfortable when you when, when you begin to swell you know some people they, they get a few dollars and they get a few and some people don't have nothing but they just swell they just begin to boil and 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 what it means now is uh, from from a personality point of view the same word means the act of a to act in a proud manner and the idea here is a sense of self importance which is often exaggerated to the point where it includes defiance and even rebellion it's a, it's it's self important who made you that important uh, uh, i did uh, self it, it didn't come from God it, it didn't come from accolades it didn't come from anybody it just you just looked at yourself and went self important uh, God I feel it here can't get along with anybody because you can't fit 
anywhere because you're just self-important uh, no god help me uh, i'm gonna preach it till somebody gets glad uh, it's it's it, it's 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 a presumptuous attitude that's what the proud the proud have from zed it's it's a presumptuous spirit where the individual presumes too much in his or her favor uh, especially in the sense of authority you know uh, you know all of a sudden now my self-importance has jettisoned me to be over everybody and 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 all I live for is position it has nothing to do with serving I, I just want the position I, I want to be in charge I I want to be seen and it doesn't matter whether I have the capacity or not that has nothing to do with it I, I just need the accolades of who I think I am it doesn't matter whether I've accomplished anything or not I am just who I am and and you're ugly that's who you are because it's it's that's it you're just ugly it, it's it's not what you do it's not how you do it it's the spirit of it, it you know pride is just to raise yourself up and walk in and want everybody to move and get out of your way and ugly in the home ugly on the job ugly in the street send the waiter back five and six and seven times because you're sitting at a table and everything around you is obnoxious because you're just stuck on yourself oh i feel god in here uh, just 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 bossing everybody around when are you gonna say thank you and can you say please and and uh, why uh, oh I feel it here pride it's it's ugly and it presumes too much and then it also carries it carries a sense of rebellion and disobedience because a proud person likes to assert their own will to the point of rebelling and to the point uh, that they hate anybody to be over them and don't want anybody to tell them what to do oh it happens in homes when children assert their own will and begin to rebel bell against the person who's taking care of them don't you know if I cut you off you wouldn't be able to eat sleep uh, don't you know uh, I, I, I want to talk to somebody here that, that's trying to go to heaven uh, don't you know if I cut you off you couldn't even go to school uh, I bought that bike you got I got everything for you you know kids sometimes they assert their own will and and they become rebellious because you love them and you treat them right and you move properly with them and all of a sudden now they can't listen to you anymore because they have not grown to the point where they are so intelligent they ain't got a dime don't have a job just sitting here eating my food and and, and you just lost your mind devil is a lie if God were to cut me off uh, I couldn't drive my car I, I, if God were to cut me off I couldn't enjoy the little money he gave me if God were to cut me off uh, you ought not to walk around here and act like you are the cat's meow or the dog's bow wow you ought to give God some glory Oh, for what he's done in your life touch two people real quick tell them God has blessed me God did this for me God opened that door for me God made the way for me it ain't about me it's about giving glory to God oh bless the lord oh my soul ah and then it's related the, the third is related to the second and that is it carries an additional element of willful decision uh, you know david when he talked in the psalms he he told the lord he said cleanse me from my hidden sin and then he said keep me from presumptuous sin and what he's saying is i don't need my willful uh, in your face kind of behavior you know uh, can i talk to you about that uh, it's pride that makes you do things all up in folks face you know you, you you're doing the wrong thing and you're just all up in somebody's face with it uh, david said i will admit to hidden sin and and i need you to cleanse me from the guilt of my hidden sin but I need you to keep me from being up in your face being rude and nasty and evil you know 
some people they get obnoxious and just they and and, and they like it <laughs> they just get all nasty and like it <laughs> come on man you can do that a little softer a little a little sweeter a little less self-imposing when when you're gonna get out the way so we can get something done <laughs> you're sitting in the way blocking the traffic uh, a house can't stand with pride folk in it with proud folk wife proud husband proud fighting all the time because because when you're proud you're gonna fight uh, I wish I could talk to you <laughs> when you're proud that the house is gonna be a mess somebody's got to humble themselves in that house for the unity to work <laughs> because pride will destroy unity <laughs> you can't work with proud folk they got to get off by themselves and if you put two or three of them in a room you better call an ambulance because somebody gonna get hurt because proud folk <laughs> are hard to deal with <laughs> oh I feel it here and God resisteth the proud I don't need God to push me away from him I don't need God to turn his back on me when I'm hollering for deliverance and help when God begins to raise you up remember to stay humble oh I feel it somebody's gonna get blessed here because what we have now the Greek is the vain glory and 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 glory now how does it become vain uh, it's vain glory why because wherever you put the glory if it does not belong there it's vain it's glory that is out of place uh, when you argue this then you understand that when I take what belongs to God and I delight in myself as the object instead of delighting in the God that I serve for making me what I am then what happens now is I have now placed the glory in the wrong place place the glory of my intellectuality the glory of my expression of my gift the glory of who I am does not belong to the object which is me it belongs to the source which is God and when you take that glory and you misrepresent it it's like idolatry to God this is why pride is worshiping yourself you see can I put it another way a self-made man worships the Creator uh -huh. Can I put it again? Did you get it? Uh, the self-made worships the creator. So now if you made yourself, then worship your creator. Because if you made yourself, you need to worship yourself. But nobody in here made themselves. So it's vain glory for you to get up and place what belongs to God on yourself. And he said, my glory, I will not not give to another oh I feel it here I know why I'm single proud that's why I got divorced proud couldn't take nothing wouldn't take what who you talk what you must be crazy do you know you talking to me oh my god with an emphasis on the me and so you break things up pride breaks things up the deaf Satan was doing well Lucifer uh, the understudy of God and and Jesus said I saw Satan as lightning I mean you get God got him out of his face shake somebody's hand and say you don't need God to move you out of his face uh, God like lightning he rose up and he was gone uh, God does not play around with folk who try to get his glory out and misrepresent themselves before him the more you have the humbler you ought to be the more you have the more rejoicing you ought to give God the more you have the more you ought to serve your brother serve your sister I can help you I know funky I'm a gift from God oh I feel like preaching here uh, and it's just, you got to understand then where to put delight because when you put delight and you have elation you have to have it in the God not in myself uh, that's why I don't like too much of this fanfare of appreciation and, and and all this anniversary conversation and sitting in big chairs with 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 big bouquets and and people talking a lot of stuff because I 
know myself I know the ugly I know the mistake potential I know the destructive ability that lies within me and all of that praise and oh my god it makes me nervous because I know how messy I can get and that's why I give God the glory because God covers you when oh, I feel it I feel it God covers you when you know you can mess up God covers you when you know you can slip God is right there all the time but those of you who can never fall I'm gonna watch you uh, I feel it in here uh, those of you that come in and look at other folk uh, like your superior uh, because you didn't go to jail this week uh, you better watch how you act when you come in here and you haven't been in any trouble you ought to say to God be the glory because my life could have been a wreck if God wasn't on my side oh I'm gonna preach until the devil gets mad yes yes it's to lift up to be on high to bring yourself up in your mind until you can't fit with anything or everybody anybody and you, yes you need a reason a justifiable self-respect you need to delight and yes have some elation arising from an act or a possession but let the glory be God's glory ah, because when it's not centered on God my delight should be in God my elation should be because of God he gave me the ability to do it he gave me the possessions and made it possible and that's why the Bible says without him Jesus said without me you can do nothing I'm the source of your intellectuality I'm the source of your brilliance I'm the source of that door opening I'm the floor without me you can't do it you can't do it without me I'm the source of your talent I gave you the ability to be who you are I'm the source of your good looks and your wonderful pulchritude I shaped you and I formed you and don't look at yourself in the mirror and and think that you can get out without me because if I just just touch your little mind you'll be a pretty crazy body uh, I feel like preaching in here uh, don't get beside yourself uh, and then and, and because because if you trust me then you won't use your body inordinately to get to the next level uh, I'll take it to the next level and you ain't got to sell yourself uh, I, I feel like preaching mm, yes 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 Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost. I, I, I'm going to roll off of that. I, I'm going to step on the other side of that one in the name of Jesus. Uh, maybe I ought to go there. Uh, it's not your physical pulchritude that's going to get you because it's God who made you. And some folk like to use how cute they are and how handsome and rugged and uh, they are to get ahead. But no, sir, that's pride. That's centering on you. But when you center it on God, then you don't sell out for little or nothing because God will use what he gave you and open the door of opportunity to take you to the next level that's why he said delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart give it to me so I can glorify you take me to the next level so I can lift you take me to a new height so I can praise your name I want your name to be on everything I do so that folks will know I belong to you use me as a reference Lord I am the God of Abraham I am the God of Jacob and I'm the God of Jones give somebody a high five and say neighbor God wants to use you as a reference but he's got to trust you with his glory that you will not take it for yourself but that you will praise him for who he is oh I feel it in here can I preach like a feel it shake somebody's hand and say I've got favor ah God's favor is on me this next door I walk through you will know it's God's favor it's not me but it's the Lord ah, I feel the Holy Ghost 
and notice now he shall give which indicates then when I think of his goodness and all that he has done for me I don't get high inordinate self-esteem I don't inflate the opinion of my ability and inflate the essentiality of my upbringing and inflate my education and my employment opportunities uh, whatever the outcome uh, it's not me it's God oh God I feel it here so I don't have to boast in myself I don't have to brag about me I don't have to glory in my wisdom because all of that is vain it's God who operates it's God who makes it uh, can, can I close this section here just you, you see pride gives oneself an inordinate self-esteem over the achievements of a person or a thing and and so we contribute then uh, to their success because nobody can do it alone God has strategically placed people around you to help you to move sometimes God has made you the moon that goes around the earth and sometimes you're the earth and God puts some moons with you but God is the one who orchestrates the people and brings them into your life at the right time it wasn't your brilliance it was God who gave you favor and brought some pieces together in order to make your life work it's God who had the money set up it's God who had the right people for you to hire it's God who gave you the wisdom to be able to discern the operation of people and everybody in your life has contributed to your success even your enemies I feel like preaching here it's God who has set the thing up so at the end of the day and let me tell you this God wants to take somebody so high and make them so rich and bless them so wonderfully that they'll understand this could not have been me I feel it here can I can I preach like I want to I touch your neighbor and say neighbor did you ever think you would be where you are now and if that answer is no then how did you get there he's able to do abundantly above what you ask or even I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel a little churchy. You did not do it by yourself. And you do not deserve all the praise oh god such kind of attitude then ignores the main contributor pride it ignores the supreme blesser it ignores the indiscriminating benefactor that's what pride does no man can bless himself he needs god to bless him and then man must bless god you can't magnify yourself you need god to magnify you feel this thing in my system a magnifying glass does not make the object bigger I wonder the object is still the same size but the glass oh my god that magnifying glass it, 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 it macrifies the thing and make it look bigger but it's not that size it's God when he's getting ready to move you into another level where you have been intimidated because you have always been small in your mind he magnifies you you ain't no bigger but you look bigger to everybody around you so that the door opens that's what God does he makes when you walk in you look like a giant but you're still the same size God just magnify and when he magnifies you then you turn around and magnify the Lord with me let us exalt his name together I'm here because God did it oh I feel this thing one pride that is awful is the pride of power and then there's the pride of knowledge and the pride of goodness uh, the pride of power loses sight to the delegator because there's a delegation of power by God and when you understand that God has given you this power and you're answerable to him for how you use it so you do not use your power to abuse others because when you're put in charge of something you're the head now when God gives you power to be the head he gives you power to cover not to abuse 
all heads should be coverings. If you're head of your family man, uh, Mr. Husband, sir, you are not head to throw around authoritative rules and have everybody slaving in the house behind you. Your head to cover. A head covers the babies and make sure they get some money to go to school. A head covers the wife and make sure that nobody can just destroy your home. You cover your daughters and keep all the wayward boys understanding that if you come up in this house and you mess with any one of my kids, you got to deal with this head. And if you don't know how to be head over somebody, see how your head treats you. And if God is my head and treats me with dignity, blesses me with substance, open doors for me, he has just shown me how to treat who he gives me power over. Oh, I feel it in here. Shake somebody's hand and say, check out your head. God is the kind of head with all the power that he has. He uses it gracefully. He blesses us richly. He never tells us off. He never gets ugly. He is always there to fix us. And when the rebuke comes, he covers us and he makes us better. He does not do things just because he can but he does it with my benefit in mind and that's why when God puts you in a place of power he puts you there to serve not to destroy so if you're an usher get your pride out the way if you're in security get your pride out the way preachers get your pride out the way because this is a people business and if you think you're too big for people then you ought to be somewhere in the desert you got to love oh god i feel it here you don't lose anything loving people you don't lose anything humbling yourself and blessing somebody around you you don't want well you're the big shot well i don't do things like that i, I don't think that god's gonna have you doing some stuff you never thought you would do nebuchadnezzar with his big head thought he was big and bad and the baddest thing going but when god got through with him he was crawling around like a donkey I feel like preaching in here. Give God glory for what he's done. But don't fool yourself. You are blessed by God. Oh, I'm going to preach. I feel like, uh, what time is it? Do I have a few more minutes? God said, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whoever therefore resisteth the ordinance of God, they resist this God himself and shall heap to themselves damnation. All powers of God. God determines the system of power. He determines the system of delegation. It is God's execution that must go for his glory and his purpose. You got a little power? It's for glorifying God. All execution must be by his decree. You got a little power? See what his will is. To resist any time is to resist God himself oh God I feel it and it becomes a rebellion because when I'm out of my place and I'm up in God's face then I am rebelling I've seized the power for myself I misuse power for myself abuse power for myself enjoy power for myself I'm now trusting in the right of might instead of the might of right I feel holiness in here give somebody a high five and say not in the right of might uh -huh, uh -huh, but in the might of right uh, in righteousness there is power not to use your power unrighteously to make folk bow down to you and I'm gonna get this position so I can put some people in their place and I just want to straighten out some people and put them under my foot and when I get over you because you got more money than me that doesn't make you better than me I feel mm, oh because you bought a new phantom five that don't make you better than me but that ain't nothing but a car oh but I can give God glory in my Chevrolet Impala and God can get the glory in my clothes I feel mm, we might as well have church uh, my job is to meet needs with the 
power God gives me. Your job is to bless folk with the power God gives you. Every time God raises you up, you ought to look to see who you can pick up with you. Every time God takes you to the next level, you ought to say, thank you, Lord. Now show me somebody that needs to come a little higher uh, instead of just sitting there by yourself. But I'm the only one in here that's driving a Rolls Royce. The devil is a lie. You ain't the only one. Folk driving Rolls Royces but ain't telling you. Can, can I preach like I feel it? I ain't got to show it off. God gave it to me. And I don't have to make somebody look small because God gave me a car. The devil is a liar. I can humble myself. Act like I don't have anything. I feel the Holy Ghost. Act like I don't have a dime instead of hurting somebody's feelings. Calling folk ugly just because you got a little shape. The devil is a liar. You don't know something hits you and you can mm, in a minute. I feel like shouting. Shake somebody's hand and say God did this. God made this and I need to give him the glory. Then you've got pride of knowledge and intellectualism and education are the signal of a sophisticated civilization yet still with all our knowledge all of our technological advances we still can't get along with each other that's the problem with America to the rest of the world pride whenever an American get off a plane in a foreign country it's like he owns the whole thing he just oh man and because we got a few things and drive a few cars and live a little more luxurious than other people we have a stink about us when we deal with folk in third world countries and go all over the place now they're trying to kill us what good is it when you're proud and you can't spend it what good is it with your pride in 9-11 I wish I could preach the pride of America has even taken the gospel and made it Americanism and preach Americanism for the word of God and talk about about wealth and health and prosperity like it's all there is to God it ain't all about having a lot of money it's who you are because you can be poor and have a stinky spirit I feel like preaching you can be rich and be ugly riches ought to soften you up but all of your intellectual knowledge the Bible says knowledge puppeteth up uh, we all make an idol out of our learning shoemaker said I quote learning that does not seek God nor understands the truth of God but simply seeks a superior disposition and personal aggrandizement has no matter because anytime you understand God you understand that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and every knowledge ought to lead to God I feel the Holy Ghost sometimes you get so smart it leads you away from God but knowledge ought to lead you to God you're so smart but it leads you to debasement to disease to death and that's why Paul said I'm ready to have church Pat he says even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge God gave them to a reprobate mind I don't care what knowledge you get don't put God out of your mind don't get so proud with whatever your accomplishments are that you forget Get to keep God in your thoughts. You've got to meditate on him day and night and give him glory all the time. Pascal said, no man speaks of humility humbly. Now I'm leading to the pride of goodness where you come in with your little sanctified self-righteous holier than thou self and try to make folk feel like they can't make it if they're not like you because oh I'm the epitome me and certain people don't get in my circle because they're little too worldly and they don't know how to praise God like I do and they don't pray as long as I do and they don't fast like I fast and, and they don't love God like I love God and you get obnoxious in every meeting you're with the Lord told you and the Lord said and all you get so ugly with Jesus gave me this and he showed me this and you 
y'all don't have no revelation but God gives me all kind of revelation your holy so holy that God don't even walk with you I feel like preaching in here always got a judgment and reading somebody down always acting like you are superior in spirit and can't act ordinary never ordinary oh Jesus oh we don't say that I went to a house in my early ministry and I got up in the morning it was a beautiful day and I got out and I said oh good morning everybody and the woman in the house said the pastor's wife I'm a lung minister now and I'm like good morning how are you and she says we don't say good morning we say praise the Lord and we don't talk any other talk than praise the Lord I just went on back in my room and asked God to give me a word for the night can I preach to you come on off it honey when I look at those that walk around acting like they're holier than everybody I said to myself she just missed her blessing he just missed his blessing they just missed their blessing because Jesus said two fellas were in the place to pray and one man got on his knees and said I thank God I'm not as other men are not an extortioner not unjust not an adulterer or I'm not even as this little publican that is right here praying in this place I feel something pushing me today I thought I was tired but I feel something moving give somebody a high five and say watch how you pray because God is listening to your prayers and don't pray down on folk he said I'm not like but the Lord said that little sinner that said Lord have mercy on me he left more justified can I preach like I feel it that little fella that crawled up in here looking bad and mad and nasty with his clothes tottered and broken but his heart was in a place where he called out to God that woman might not have on Chanel and might not know how to walk like a model does not know how to present herself with dignity but if her heart is right with God and she says Lord have mercy she'll leave with Jesus and you'll go out here by yourself I feel the power of God I'm getting ready to close and that's why I ran to Philippians because when he was in the form of God he thought it not robbery to be equal with God but made himself of no reputation humbled himself and came in the form of a man touch your neighbor say if Jesus can humble himself so can you get off your high horse so you can bless somebody else get off your high horse so you can keep your home together or you're going to be alone like me get off your high horse so you can work with other folk and network so that we can turn back the hand of poverty and set some things in order where two or three are gathered in my name he didn't say you alone he said two or three one can chase a thousand but two can chase ten thousand shake somebody's hand like you gonna shake it off and say it's time to get with me so we can do some things for the Lord it's time to get with me so we can bless some people around us our cause it was humility that saved my soul because the word robbery means to seize unlawfully or to hold on to something so tight that you can't let it go but I'm so glad he didn't hold on to his godness when he saw my soul in a mess but he let go the expression still had the possession put on a form of a man he came so humble that they didn't even know he was God he came
became so humble that he died on the cross but his humility reached down to the prostitute he didn't stop at corporate America but he came to inner city ghetto and reach you and me in the third world country and he pulled us up and I heard the Bible say God hath highly exalted him and gave him a name above every name that at the name of Jesus the white knee the black knee the prostitute knee the lawyer's knee every knee shall bow touch your neighbor so make a name for yourself humble yourself and God will give you a name that everybody knows when you walk down the street they say hi I saw you the other day give somebody a high five say humble yourself God's getting ready to take you higher and you ain't got to floss it just be humble with it love folk with it smile with it be nice with it I feel the spirit of God I feel like running out every proud spirit I rebuke every attitude that is not like God shake somebody's hand like you gonna shake it off and say humble yourself you ain't all that much God is all that much God made you if God don't keep you you'll be wasted and so I come to praise him I'm not too proud to praise him I'm not too rich to praise him I'm not too good looking to praise him I'm not too dressed up to praise him because of everything I have God gave it to me touch somebody say I'm favored by the Lord I ain't got time to be ugly I ain't got time to stick my head up and walk by you like you're a nobody because if you don't come I can't do what I do touch your neighbor say you need somebody you can't do it all stop being ugly learn how to pray for folk instead of putting folk down because the more you put down is the quicker down you going but when you humble yourself God will raise you up and no man can touch you they can hate you but they'll need you they can hate you but they can't cut you down because when you're walking with God you're walking with power and you don't have to be proud but you can be humble because I will be blessed I am blessed and I'm going to be blessed so I can give God the glory out of my life somebody here ought to say glory belongs to God Humble yourself. I'm closing. I want you to take somebody's hand. Over. I pastored a young man years ago who was brilliant. He was brilliant. And today he should have a work for God that's enormous in blessing people. But I saw this, this inordinate, inordinate arrogance he thought he was just all of that don't let people fool you folks sometimes flatter you because they're trying to get something all right, now. you ain't that much Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. amen sometimes people manipulate your ego mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just say just like a great conductor 
they just conduct you into the most foolishness you ever thought of. Hey Amen. Just, just raise up your ego and just... Hey Amen. And I told him, I said, now, I think, and, and I was young. I mean, I, 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 I didn't even know it was God talking to him. I said, your pride is going to be your downfall. You have everything that anybody could have to be successful. But you have this inordinate affection for yourself. Sitting in the penitentiary right now. Didn't wish it on him. Didn't want him to go there. It makes you ugly. It tears up your home, man. Tears up your home. I'm head. I have to talk to you. And, 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 and the church man especially, he comes, he comes in with that Bible stuff. It don't relate to anything because God did not give you that Bible for that purpose. If your head you cover, you cover and and because you your head it doesn't mean that you're not gracious you're gracious oh please honey please thank you so you so much in charge you can't say thank you listen that woman you're with, she has some love you ain't got yet. Oh yeah. She got some stuff you ain't got yet. Because don't nobody want to open up to somebody that's talking down to them all the time. Amen. You don't got the door closed, the gate closed, the tunnel closed, everything closed. Because you don't know how to humble yourself in your speech. But this is the way I am. No change. Change. So that there can be some harmony. Amen. Why? Sometimes it's wonderful when you're dating and all of a sudden now you get mad. You my husband. And you supposed to. Amen. I was listening to Otis Redding and he's singing the song Try a Little Tenderness. And the thing that was so funny about the song was, he said, he's telling, he's, he said, try a little tennis because you see, she's waiting for a dress that she's not gonna get. But while she's waiting, see, Humility speaks of proper self-esteem, which means I can be gracious even though I'm in charge. Because in my home, I'm not trying to build on friction. I'm trying to build on harmony. And if my actions are consistent with harmony, then it begins with a wonderful spirit towards whom I'm with and my environment. So now, we're going to pray that God, as he blesses us, as he opens doors, Lord, keep me gracious, kind, humble, 
because he gives more to the humble and he resists dear father in Jesus name we have gathered today Lord and you are challenging us about our attitude and I pray right now that you cause us to hear help us to be easy to talk to easily entreated help us to be approachable oh God help us Lord help us to speak to each other with the dignity that is deserved because Lord it's about person not position and I pray God that this message today breaks the yoke somebody's attitude that's been keeping them from moving into that next place of blessing oh God I pray now that you just fix the attitude give me the right attitude with the talent with the gifts that you have already given so that the door will always open and will never close I thank you right now I thank you for a breakthrough. I thank you for a breakthrough. And I thank you for what you're about to throw on us.